hello hello everyone uh, so it's Friday morning and um, yeah I'm here again with um, Tashi this time so yeah we've just finished uh, looking at the five Buddhas and I thought we might start looking at the um, at the aggregates the heaps that make us up and that we take so seriously that we create a self out of. So let's see how this goes. It's a beautiful day, it's still sunny. I think that's going to change over the weekend. Um, but you know, in a way, we've been really lucky because this week we've had sun most of the week. And it was a good start for us being confined at home to have had that lovely weather. So the aggregate of form is not the self. Even though we believe the body is the self, there is no body that possesses its parts. And because there are many parts, when we examine with reasoning, we know the body is not the self. So that's a verse um, from a particular text by, by Kempo Sultrim Gyamso. The aggregate of the body is not the self. Even though we believe the body is the self, there is no body that possesses its parts. And because there are many parts, when we examine with reasoning, we know the body is not the self. So we don't examine with reasoning. That's the point, isn't it? That we um, take our body for granted and that we think we own it. We own our body. Well, of course, we don't own our body. We don't really have half as much control over the body as we think we do. And I think, uh, in a way, we discover that in all sorts of ways. We dis certainly discover it when we're ill. So I certainly used to um, identify myself with somebody who didn't get ill. And as I've got older, I can see that that's, um, that's a kind of identity that I'm gonna, that I have to give up because um, well, there was a time that I had shingles and uh, that was a very big change in my life because I realised that um, I'd always been terribly healthy, but I couldn't really just take that for granted. You know, it wasn't necessarily going to be how it would be forever. So, um, yeah, it was a bit of a shock to me, really, to find that, um, that I could be that ill. Um, also, getting old, I think, is uh, quite... Um, quite a teaching in how it doesn't matter how much you look after yourself how healthy you are you know the body changes um here i am old and wrinkly and um yeah it's uh you know the, the color goes out of your hair and um basically your body changes in ways that you would prefer it not to but um our 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 view of our body goes much deeper than that as well. It goes much deeper into this identification of having um, some kind of uh, nugget, you could say, of, of something that seems distinctly us, distinctly how we are. And sometimes we can identify that as being maybe our personality, our soul, our essence, and uh, maybe we hope that it will carry on beyond this lifetime. Or maybe we distinctly think that it will never carry on. And that earth to earth, dust to dust, ashes to ashes, and that's all there is. Well, what Buddhism says is that um, awareness is completely indestructible. But that's mysterious and that's for another time. So back to our body. I mean, something that we can do in meditation from time to time is just look to see where is uh, this soul, um, where is this part of ourself that seems to be the self? So, um, you know, is it in our head? Is it in our heart? Where does it reside? And, of course, the more, the more you look for it, the more you realise that it can't be found. You can't find anything. It's certainly not part of the body because actually we can lose most parts of our body. And um, 
and still feel like ourselves. You know, we can lose limbs, you can even have a heart transplant, a lung transplant, and still, you know, we, we, we feel that there is some essence. So Buddhism says there's no unchanging self. You know, all there is is this provisional self, this view that we have of ourself, this um, personality that we identify with. And, um, but ultimately, there, there's nothing that's unchanging. And that's very exciting from a Buddhist point of view, because it means that we can change. It means that we can grow and change and develop and eventually uh, attain Buddhahood. Perhaps most people believe that we can change a little bit, but I don't know that many people believe we can totally transform ourselves. And, well, it, it needs unpacking really as to what that, what that means, you know, that we could totally transform ourselves. But I do believe that that is true. I think it takes a lot of time and probably many lifetimes. But, um, yeah, I can certainly see ways that I have, uh, I've substantially changed in the last 20 years, last 25 years, uh, tremendously so. And that's very encouraging. It's very encouraging to think I can change. I don't think I changed in the ways I thought I would change. Um, so that's another thing. We can't predict how we'll change. Because the ways that we would like to change, or the person we like, we would like to be, is um, well, it's probably really somebody else. It's probably not us. It's probably some other person. So we will change, but we can't always see how that will be. So the body is not the self, even though we believe the body is the self. There is no body that possesses its parts and that's all it is it's a conglomeration of parts that have come together from causes and conditions and when those causes and conditions change um, eventually they will dissolve back into the earth perhaps I'll leave it there for today I'll see you tomorrow